Good morning. Welcome to TCAF, Word Balloon Academy. Uh, thanks for making this your first stop. I really appreciate it. I know I got some stiff competition with the grants and that. Don't all get up at once. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so today we're going to talk about some Kickstarter. So who am I? My name's Adriano. I uh, write and I letter indie comics. Um, I'm a super backer. I've backed over 800, um, 800 different Kickstarters. I've created two under this account. I've helped more. I've been in a few. So, I, you know, I have experience. Uh, but as far as under my own account, I have two, uh, both of which uh, funded pretty well. A project we love, backer favorite. <laughs> I, you know, I know what I'm doing a little bit. So <laughs> what are we talking about? We're going to go kind of through the life cycle of what a Kickstarter is, right? What you can expect as you're going through it. Um, some things to consider, some things to be prepared for, and then I'll, I'll show you some resources and kind of where I learned kind of what, what I'm doing and how to do it. Um, before we get started, anyone here run a Kickstarter before? Anyone familiar with it? All right, great. So this is going to be good. All right. So let's we'll start with day one. Where do you go? What do you kickstart on? Well, I just said it, Kickstarter. Kickstarter is the biggest of all of the crowdfunding tools out there by far. They, they, have, you know, they have the first mover advantage, right? They really got in, built this community. If you're doing comics, Kickstarter is truly where you want to be. Indiegogo, very close second, right? You're, you're going to have a lot of comics on there as well. Some of the subject matter there is a little more open to be <laughs> politically correct about it. So, so it depends on what your topic is. Indiegogo might be your home. Um, but generally, Kickstarter, very, very robust and strong community. That's where we'll be focusing today. There's a new entrant, Zoop. Um, if you're not interested in running your own campaign, if you really would prefer to just pay someone to do it, Zoop is your home. That's where you want to go. What they do is they actually take your whole campaign, they package it, they put it together. They'll ask you for bits and pieces. They need your art, etc. But they'll actually run the campaign end to end. They'll even help with fulfillment to a degree. So they do take a substantial chunk of what you make out of it. <laughs> so something to keep in mind where Kickstarter, you're paying your small fee. It is a Kickstarter fee, of course, but uh, Zoop takes a nice commission out of what you're doing, but it's hands off. You can focus on you know, being a creative if you want to go with Zoop. Crowdfunder, Canadian entrant. So I, I always like to push them because they're very friendly. <laughs> if you ever need help, they're right there. They're very great. Um, however, still very small. So something to keep in mind, the crowd you're going to get on Crowdfunder, not nearly as big as Kickstarter. However, although I do focus on Kickstarter, they're going to come up later in the presentation for a very good reason. And last is BackerKit. So BackerKit is actually something that ties in to Kickstarter. Uh, it's a plugin. So you can do your pre-launch through BackerKit, and you can do your post-launch fulfillment. So you can add a store. So when somebody has back to Kickstarter, Right? You can do your surveys through there. You can then send them to add more to their campaign after the fact. So Backer Kit's really good for that. But recently, they've also set up their own crowdfunding. So if you do go to Backer Kit and look to use their tools, they will push you to actually launch the campaign on Backer Kit itself. Again, Kickstarter is the biggest, but to each his own, if you want to try something new, you want to try something different, Backer Kit does have all the information that they've scraped from Kickstarter. So uh, you know, there's a lot of good information. Again, why Kickstarter? I keep saying that's the one we're going to focus on. Comics, highest performing category on Kickstarter in general. Not dollar amount, that's games, right? They're <laughs> by far, <laughs> games, <laughs> games does it. But as far as success rate of people launching campaigns and them getting funded, comics wins. So hard to argue with that, right? Like you're, you're going to put your campaign up there, then, you know, 66% success rate. So two out of every three campaigns is going to, succeed and you'll see why some of them do fail when you're on there right like some just you know they put some text and throw it up there you need there is a systematic approach to how you launch a campaign what people expect to see what we're going to be going through today so there is a method to the madness on how to succeed but if you do the right things you'll definitely uh you'll definitely see some success because comics seems to be a very popular category and you also get the larger, more established groups like uh, Dynamite Boom Image. They're launching special collections. Uh, you know, 
a lot of backlist stuff or even new campaigns. Berserker is one of the biggest ones they've done with the uh, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> that, that one, you know, broke all kinds of records. So it does help because those people that would never see Kickstarter before, you know, they want to back this new campaign. They create a Kickstarter account and now they start getting pushed your comics as well. Right. So it's definitely, you know, it seems like a bad thing when the bigger players come in, but in this case, it might actually be to your benefit. All right. So before you start, right, if you've never been on Kickstarter before, you don't have an account, get one, start backing some projects. One of the things about Kickstarter is people will look at your ratio. So they want to see that you haven't created three and backed zero. They want to see that you're backing projects. So and I've backed a lot myself. There's a reason for that. One, I'm just a fan, of course. But it does help if you show that you're part of the community. You're giving back here and there. And it doesn't mean you have to go and get the most exclusive things and get the $500 foil metal variant. You know, you can just support people digitally. You can get the base level rewards. Just make sure that you're, you are helping people and you're part of the community. And again, they'll give back as well, right? It is a community on Kickstarter. Also, follow what's popular. So it doesn't cost anything to actually follow campaigns. So if there's ones that, you know, you don't necessarily need it in your life, but you want to see how it does, there is a way to follow a campaign. So you just save it, follow it, see the life of it, see how it's done. Um, and you can use that to build your own project. The other thing, bring your audience. So what I'm saying here is, you know, you should have an audience a little bit before you go into Kickstarter in some form or fashion, whether that's through social media or a newsletter or just you have a lot of friends whatever, but you need to bring people to Kickstarter is the catch. There is some organic growth in there. You can technically launch tomorrow with, without telling anybody and you may get a few backers, but realistically you need to bring people, right? And the more you bring, the more that the organic reach happens as well. So make sure that you plan and you do bring people. And again, we'll, we'll get into this specifically. And then lastly, you're going to plan your project. That's the topic of today's session. So, the discover page. This is where you can do your most base of research. You'll, you can go on here, you can see what's live, you can sort, you can see what's most popular, you can see what's most funded, what has the most backers. You, you can sort this in all different kinds of ways, but I'll give you some tips right up front. Romance, sci-fi, westerns, slice of life and horror all do well on Kickstarter. I say romance because it's typically it's more like NSFW stuff, right? So <laughs> that tends to do very well on Kickstarter. Um, it does get a little bit of heat because people get upset about how well it does. But but if you can do it and you, you do it seriously, you can do really well, right? Like you have to show that there is a story behind it and all that. Like build a true product, it'll it'll do gangbusters on Kickstarter. So well worth looking into if that's that's your topic. The downside, you know, your superhero comics. Um, they don't tend to do very well. There are successes. There's a lot of success stories that you can find of superhero comics. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but the, you know, the hill's a little steeper for you to do well there, right? It's just not, not the market for it because now you're competing with, you know, the big two and, and typically to create an indie comic, you're, you're doubling, tripling the price of what a issue of Batman would cost. So keep that in mind. That's your competition. So Kickstarter is not always the home for it. Again, if you have something unique, you have something really good, you can definitely make your money on it and you can get find your audience. But again, a lot steeper hill. Same goes for crime. Some fantasy, again, it depends on how deep into fantasy you go. And again, there's an accepted, this, none of this is a hard and fast rule. Everything is done well in some form. It's just how high do you want the difficulty to be, right? And then the workaround, mixed genres. That seems to be, one of the easiest ways you want to do your fantasy book, make it, you know, fantasy crossed with whatever, right? And that, that you know, your fantasy Western is a popular one that just came out. It's a Western with dragons, right? And, and it did very well, <laughs> right? So keep, keep that kind of thing in mind. There's a good way that you can cross your audiences and take a popular one and take the one you really want to work on. And, and then you'll at least, you know, build that audience and then hopefully bring them along with you. So the other tool that you can track totally free kick track. So this is a ranking tool. And what it does is every day it'll go, it'll scrape Kickstarter, build out charts, build out all kinds of things. You can just go straight to Kickstarter. Or if you have Google Chrome, there might be a Firefox extension as well. 
you can install it and it'll actually give you the charts directly on, on the Kickstarter page. So you can see how many comments they're getting, how many backers per day, how much funding and what the expended, expected trends are. So, you know, their day one, how they did this much, what's the expected based on that trend. So KickTrack's a really great tool if you want to see not only your own campaign and how you're performing, but how other campaigns are performing. It's all public, so it really helps you in building that research. So your audience, I mentioned social media, newsletter, and then your friends, family, whoever else you can find your enemies. Grab whoever you can. Uh, it's social media. I do have a warning for that. Uh, uh, it's not anything new. You guys all know it's a time suck, right? So be careful. <laughs> Don't get into arguments. Don't get into whatever. <laughs> try to really try to be part of the community though, right? You, you want to push your campaign, but you also want to push other people's campaigns. Some of your best supporters are going to be other creators, right? So you want to say, hey, this looks really cool. Hey, I just back this. Hey, I really like what this person is doing and use that. Lift them up. They'll do the same, right? Typically they'll do the same and you'll find a lot of good support on social media. Again, a little bit of filtering to do, a little bit of avoiding this and that, but still well worth it. Surprisingly, you know, my best performing social media is X. Unfortunately, still X. I said X. It's Twitter. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's not my favorite, but it's, that's where a lot of the indie comics community still is. So, you know, just be very liberal with your block button or your mute button. And, and it, it becomes a lot nicer to be on. <laughs> Newsletter. If you haven't built that, start, start today. You don't have to be terribly frequent. You can do it every two months and just say, Hey, this is what I'm up to. Right. You can go every day. I don't recommend that, but I, I do it twice a month myself. But definitely, definitely, definitely newsletter. These are people who are interested in you, right? They're signing up to your newsletter because they're interested in you. It's easy to follow somebody on social media. It's a commitment when they do it with a newsletter. So definitely, if you haven't built one, start. You can use Substack. I use Substack. It's free. It's easy. It, you know, you, it takes you 10 minutes to get set up, and you have, you have your newsletter, and you start collecting emails. You can start with me if you want. I'm happy to join your newsletter, right? So if you need someone... <laughs> And then friends, family, coworkers, you should really bug them. Um, <laughs> you don't guilt them, right? Like just get them in on the story. Like they're, they'll be happy for you if they're, you know, if they're your people. So, you know, it's really more with them, not just saying, hey, I built this thing, can you pay for it? It's more, look at what I'm doing, you know? I'm following my dream. I'm doing this thing. I'd love it if you'd help me out. Not all of them are going to do it. <laughs> it's fine. But, but still, it's, it's going to be helpful if you have people you know you can depend on day one, right? All right, so pre-launch. There's two methods to this. This is actually a campaign that I'm doing starting next week. Um, you're going to see a lot of previews, actually, for it today. Uh, there's a Kickstarter pre-launch page. This is a blind collection of emails. So if somebody hits notify, you'll see your number tick up as to how many followers you have. You have no idea who clicked that, though. They have to tell you effectively. Even when your campaign launches, you don't know who clicked that button. What this does, though, it will send an email to everybody. Hey, this campaign just launched. Now's your time. Right? And there, as I mentioned before about following campaigns, whoever clicks this is following this campaign until they unfollow it. So right to the last day of the campaign, they will be following. So very important to have a pre-launch page. So if you have a teaser image, 16 by 9 image ready, get it, get it up, right? That's what I would recommend. Kickstarter actually recommends against what I just said. They want you to do it two to three weeks. The way they see it is it's more of an uh, eventized thing. They want you to basically do everything in rapid succession, right? Two weeks, and then it's a big event when you launch two weeks later because their concern is somebody clicks a button and forgets. Uh, you know, and if you do it within two weeks, maybe they'll remember who you are. Uh, you know, different schools of thought there. I think they forget as soon as they click, to be fair, until the email comes. So <laughs> two weeks, two months, you can go up to six months. People have done six months with their pre-launch page. Really depends, but it's very important to get that number as high as possible before you launch because day one, very important, right, in the scheme of things. And we'll, we'll get into specifically why. So there's a workaround to this. I mentioned Backer Kit. So there's a tool called Backer Kit Launch. So the reason this is important is because it actually collects the emails. 
So it creates a pre-launch page for you, or well, you create it. And when people click here, it actually grabs their emails and creates a mailing list and then sends them to your Kickstarter page. So then hit that follow button again. So you're not losing anything. You're actually just actually collecting information. You know who there is and who's involved. So it, it's a very good tool. However, it comes at a cost, right? hundred dollars us right now that might change overnight. Right. But there is a bit of a cost, but if you're doing your pre-launch and you want to know who's following very good tool, and then the other piece is if you're launching a second campaign, a third campaign, a fourth campaign, it actually scrapes your previous campaigns, grabs everyone from them, and then sends this pre-launch to them. So there's a lot of the legwork for you up front. All right. So you've done all your day one prep. Now we're going to look at building the actual page. And we're going to do it by stealing what works. Go to these other campaigns. Look at how they've been built. Right. See what resonates. See what doesn't make sense to you. Right? See what you flip past and don't even really look at and what catches your eye. Make notes, copy it, do the same thing. Right? Pretty straightforward. There's, there's a lot on comics pages. Again, a lot of what applies to comics doesn't apply to the rest of Kickstarter and crowdfunding. They usually tell you don't put too much on your page, put a lot of video, put yourself using the thing. that uh, It makes sense for technology. Right? But I don't think anybody wants a video of you reading your own book. So <laughs> don't worry about it. But yeah, keep, the, keep that in mind. So in comics pages tend to be longer, but that's because the market wants to see what they're buying. So they want to see preview pages. They want to see the creators. Right? So don't be afraid if your page is too long. It's to your benefit in a, 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 at a point. But the order does matter as well. Right? You want your preview pages up front. So you really grab them. You don't want to tell them, you know, a long text story. It's comics readers. They want to see the art. Just keep that in mind. And when we're talking about preview pages, right? Ideally, you have completed pages like this one on the right. You don't want to necessarily just throw up whatever you got and say, oh, yeah, it'll be done when you give me money, right? Like you want to show them what they're getting, a completely colored, lettered, finished page. Show them this is what's going to be in the book. This is what you're getting. Right, it comes for a couple of reasons. One shows that you're professional and you can actually finish something. Right. Two, it gives them a sense of your writing style. Right. It gives them a sense of your art style because it, this is what they're getting. Right. Where the page on the left, though, it does give you a sense of how things will look and how things are paced. You know, maybe my lettering is terrible. Maybe people, right, won't be able to read it when it comes. Uh, you want to basically give people up front, like this is going to look nice. Don't worry. <laughs> Here's some pages to prove it. Right. And it gives them an actual preview of the story of saying, like, this is, this is what we're here for, right? So, all right, so the rewards. There's a thing with Kickstarter and the difference between mobile and desktop. The desktop setup is very well spaced out. You build your whole campaign on the desktop, and then most of your backers are going to be on mobile, right? Two-thirds of them probably on mobile. So you have to consider how it plays out on mobile. One of the biggest things is the rewards don't show up on mobile at all. They actually have to click the back your project button and then they can see it. And that's, although it's not a commitment at that point, if you're dealing with somebody who's a little new to it, they don't know that, right? Back your project sounds like you're checking out. But that's just for you to see the rewards. So the workaround, make it part of your page, right? You add the rewards to your page so that they can scroll down and they can see what can I back before actually having to back it, right? It, it takes a little bit of that friction out, and then hopefully they still hit that button. That button doesn't go away at the bottom, that back, has, back this project, so you're good there. But yeah, no rewards page right now, so keep that in mind. The other thing, so when we're talking about rewards, we, if you're talking about physical comics, you gotta ship them, right? So there's three ways to handle that. You can do all-in pricing. So that's, you know, this comic is $20, it's coming to you for free. Like shipping is free, rather. It's not free. You packaged it, but it sounds better when you say it's free, right? <laughs> so keep that in mind. Kickstarter checkout, that's the most common. So Kickstarter does have a tool where you can break down the shipping per country, right? When they go to back, it'll say, hey, so you're from Canada. This is a $10 comic, and it's $20 to ship it to you. So that's the, that's the downside of doing that. It does upset a handful of people where they go to actually check out, and they find out, Cost just doubled, sometimes tripled if you're from here, 
<laughs> right? Happens a lot. We get mailed at the shipping quite often. So if you want to take that surprise out, all in is usually a good way to do it. And then the last, so this is more creator focused, post campaign. So if you're using a tool like Backerkit, Backerkit will allow you to actually collect the shipping after the fact. Why would you do that? Because sometimes the shipping rates change on you. So whatever you put into Kickstarter, whatever you factored in on your all-in pricing, you know, two months ago when you launched your campaign and now you've printed it and it's in front of you and now you want to start sending it out and you realize everything just went up two bucks per package, that protects you. You can do that. However, as a backer, right, your $10 comic is suddenly an extra whatever and it's a bill you weren't expecting because you backed this however long ago and now somebody's coming and saying, you want that thing you paid for? Pay more, right? So it, it can cause a little bit of friction there. So again, if you want the safety of knowing that you will definitely be covered, you can use that approach. But many ways to collect your shipping, but it is a big part of it. One other thing I will mention, for the first two, all in pricing, obviously it's included. And for Kickstarter checkout, this does go towards your total. So whatever your total funding is, Shipping counts, except if you do the last one, because you're collecting it after the fact, right? So if you need X amount of dollars to make your, your comic, don't, don't forget that you have to consider that the shipping will count towards that number, and you lose that money once you pay for the shipping. So you need 1000 bucks to make the comic, and 500 of that shipping, you actually only made 500 So a little bit tricky with the shipping, keep that in mind. Video, is the video working? Yeah, all right. So video is important, um, even with comics, because of this. As you can see in the little video on the corner, now when you hover over on the Discover page, it actually starts playing the video automatically. Uh, this is new, this just happened like in the past couple of weeks. So it, videos were always important. Mo the most successful Kickstarters, oh, it just disappeared. The most, <laughs> the most successful Kickstarters always have videos, even, even in comics, they always have videos. But uh, it's become even more important now on the Discover page, right? Because if you don't have it, you look kind of static. It doesn't, it's missing that level of professionalism that you want to make sure that you have. So definitely, definitely, definitely have a, have a video and have captions because the Discover page is silent. You don't know if the person even turns on the sound when they come on or if they can hear it, to be fair. So definitely captions, right? Make them nice and big because you're going to have that small postage stamp space on the discover page. Let's see if I can make it come back. There we go. Right. Like it's a relatively small space. So you want nice big captions and you want, you know, you got four or five seconds to catch their attention because even you see in my little sample here, I don't stay very long on each one. So capture their attention right up front. And the, there's a part of your page called risks and challenges. So this is another sales thing you can use. Actually, you have to be forthright about it. This is actually, it's not about sales. It's about you legitimately saying there is a risk to this project, right? It's, it's just a thing with crowdfunding. You're paying for a product that's not complete. Even if it is complete, you know, generally speaking, it's not something that you can go pick up anywhere. It's something that has to be fulfilled. So you use this risks and challenges pages to, to quell any of those worries to say, Hey, I have experience or, you know, I have experience in this other field, whatever. Use this to sell yourself to say, Yes, it's a risk that, you know, the printer doesn't print right, but I know how to deal with that, right? We are going to get you this product. I have experience building, you know, uh, comics. I have experience fulfilling and shipping. Whatever you can do to make people feel to get better about backing your campaign, that they're not just, you know, you're, you're doing this for some random fun thing just to collect some money. <laughs> this is your spot to really make that pitch and say, you know, I'm a professional. This comic will get in your hands regardless of these things. Right. So keep that in mind and you want to stay as positive as possible because it's actually the last thing that shows up on your page. So you don't want to leave them on a negative note that, you know, if, if a tornado hits, you're not getting your comics like that's out of your control. Right. You want to you want to say, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure this comes to you. Right. All right. Let's talk about rewards. So Kickstarter allows you to do early bird pricing. Um, it's a little bit of a controversial um, topic because with Kickstarter, your first day, your first couple days, your biggest fans are supporting you. And maybe you want to reward them and give them a good price. But realistically, you're making most of your money in the first couple days. 
So by doing early bird pricing, you are cutting yourself off at the knees by saying, <laughs> hey, biggest fans who would pay anything for this, pay less. And then everyone else, you get to pay more. And the worst part is this doesn't go away after, right? So you have two days or three days of early birds. This reward is stuck on the campaign now. As soon as someone pays for a campaign once, it's locked. So somebody pays for an early bird. You're now telling everyone that supports after the early bird time that, hey, everybody else got a deal and you missed out, right? And again, your biggest fans all got the deal. The ones that are iffy are the ones that are also going to get upset that they missed out on the deal. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Again, totally valid approach. If you really want to hit some numbers, you can see I did. I, that's, that's actually a reward from one of my previous campaigns. You know, you can totally do it. However, you do find, you know, you may hurt yourself from the back end. So the way around that, early in returning, backer rewards. So if you're in your second campaign, obviously you can do returning. Um, there's no system for this. Uh, you have to do this all manually, but it's well worth it. So instead of saying, hey, I'm going to just give this to you for cheaper, give them something else, right? Um, you can find communities that'll give you free digital comics of their campaigns. Again, making those friends on social media. There's some groups you can join that'll exchange and say, hey, I'll give you my digital copy. You give me yours, right? And it gives you something to give up front to say, hey, if you, if you support in the first three days, I'm going to throw you some digital comics. Or if you have some promo material from campaigns past left over, right? Oh, yeah, I'm going to throw that in your, in your package just as a thank you for coming, right? Something I would have normally charged a dollar for, you're going to get for free just because you're a pal and you helped me in the first couple days, All right? So keep that in mind. Again, it's, it's, you're still rewarding those people for showing up early, but you're not hurting yourself in doing so. Then bundles. So if you do want to give discounts, volume. Volume's how you want to do it, right? So you're going to print whatever you're going to print. The more you print, the cheaper the prints get. So ideally, you're getting people to back multiple things at once. Maybe you have a back catalog to offload like I do, right? You, <laughs> you can say, I'll give you a deal. Pick up all my comics, I'll, I'll make it a lot cheaper for you. And use that. Tell them how much they're saving, right? Uh, that's, and calculate it liberally as well. Like, this is how much it would have cost you to support on each campaign. You can include the shipping in that and really knock off the price and tell them how much they're actually saving, right? But you, you definitely want to use the bundles to your advantage. That's, that's probably the only time I would discount. It's the only time I do discount, right? Is get more and I'll give you more, right? You don't want to say, hey, get this one thing and I'm going to devalue it. You're bumping up the value of everything because you're giving it to them in a package. And the necessary evil of variant covers. So these are the variant covers of my next project here. But, you know, there's a lot of controversy about variants and how they're ruining the industry and all that. But they work. They work really well. <laughs> and let's say you're on your first campaign. What are you going to bundle if you have only one product? all your covers, right? You can do bundles of two covers, three covers, whatever you got. Some, some go nuts and they do the whole alphabet. They have A to Z of covers. Um, it's usually subtle changes. Here's a blue background. Here's a red background. Here's the character wearing clothes, not wearing clothes. They'll do all kinds of <laughs> subtle variants. It's up to you how you want to do it. The biggest advantage you do get from doing variants, though, is it's an easy way to start making artist friends out there, right? You can say, hey, I'm going to commission you to just do a cover. You most have time because it's, you know, it won't take them terribly long. They'll whip together a nice cover. Now you just built a contact and an audience. Because then you can say, hey, I have artist, you know, Zed with me. And they're, you know, they're doing this variant cover. And then they'll go and push it to their audience, right? So now you're getting a whole group of people that you never would have got on your own. So a lot of advantages to variant covers, aside from just, you know, having more things to sell it really does um, expand what you can do. And you can see I've done them for every project that I've done. So highly recommended. All right, let's talk about rewards and the levels. There's three, really. There's more than three, but let's, let's break it into three. There's your entry level for people who are iffy or, or you know, don't want to pay shipping. There's your main, which is that's the meat of where you're going to make most of your money. That's like 70 80% of your money. And then the premium that's where you can get really crazy and start coming up with uh, interesting things to sell. So let's talk about it. Point of entry, digital. Digital is easy. 
digital doesn't cost you anything outside of the production of the comic itself. But in terms of printing and shipping, zero. It's pure profit. So, you know, you give them a deal to a degree. But right now, the running rate is about $5 US for a 24 to 28 page comic, and you go up from there. So you can make some decent profit doing this. Your, most of your backers are going to be in the digital realm just because they don't want to pay shit, right? Reasonably so. Um, so you're going to find most of your backers here, but you won't make most of your money here because, again, you're at $5 a pop. You're probably not going to see crazy, crazy profit of profits. So that's where your main comic comes up. And this is your main book, all your variant covers, basically your, your ones and twos that you're sending out, and, and your bundles are counted in this as well. right? This is what you're going to be marketing the most. Again, this is where 70% of the people that are backing you are going to be. So you're going to make all your money. right? So again, won't be the biggest count of human beings that will back your project, but most of your money is coming from this bit. So really focus on this. Really focus on getting... A physical comic in people's hands. You can see I, I got the nice like 3D version of the cover. That's to help people visualize. Like this is a physical comic in people's hands. It's not just a picture. It's a real thing that will be printed and you will be holding, right? And then the big ones. So um, get crazy. Think of some things that people will pay obscene amounts for. You'll be surprised. Um, I just had a friend, uh, Roberto Villacava, who said, hey, I'll just draw whatever you want. For 500 bucks, he got that. He got a couple backers uh, through his campaign and to fund it real quick. Um, so, if you have a skill, sell it. That's, uh, you know, I, I mentioned I write in letter. So, I offer that as a service. And then I'll throw you a comic too while we're there. <laughs> right. So, we can work together. I'll grade your, uh, you know, I'll, I'll letter your comic. But some people will go, they'll, they have a CGC account. They'll grade their own comics and sell a, a graded version of their comic. Uh, if you're an artist, draw some stuff, right? <laughs> offer to draw them into the comic, offer to, you know, draw something on, a, on commission. Um, there are all kinds of ways to do it. So just get creative. Think of what you offer and then offer it as a reward. And uh, again, all you need is one or two of these and it, it can make your day. So really uh, think of what, what, what you can do and don't overextend yourself as well, right? You want to limit these. You can limit rewards in Kickstarter. So make sure you do. Right, you don't want fifteen people coming and saying, "Hey, I want I want a comic made overnight." Um, that'd be that'd be tough. <laughs> so you could say, "Hey, uh, this is limited to one or three or whatever." Definitely keep that in mind. So I mentioned there's other reward levels. Retailer. This is a uh, again, it's similar to the big rewards. You may not see anybody take this. You may see only one or two, but the key here is you're offering the same thing. So again, that print run goes way up. Right, you're, and then you're going to give them a nice discount to do this because they're a retailer. But you're creating a contact. You're exposing yourself to an audience that you wouldn't have been otherwise. Right, some store somewhere decided they wanted to to put this on their shelves, so that's great. And then if you do get this, make sure you include all your promo materials, all kinds of stuff that they can lay out on the store. Again, imagine you're going there yourself and have everything <laughs> for them to really push people to your comic. So. Retailer awards are, you know, again, I've seen some some of my friends there have done really well with them. Some get no hits. It really depends on how the retailers are feeling, <laughs> how the market's doing that month. But it doesn't hurt to include it. I would typically, you can add rewards at any time. So I would typically add them later on. I wouldn't have them from day one, right? I, I add them kind of midway. It gives you a little bit of a boost because uh, you will find that there's a lag in the campaign, which we'll get to. Okay, so you've done everything. It's all ready. So it's launch day. First 48 hours. Wouldn't call it make or break, but it's pretty close. It's almost make or break. Um, you can't really see the, <laughs> the graphs there, but you'll notice they all kind of start most of the way up, right? Like they're they're all pretty, uh, I wonder, do I have? Oh, I do have. Yeah, like this one starts about here and here, right? So they're all starting very close to funded or past funded. Your first 48 hours are pretty critical, not just for you making most of your money, because that's, that's where you will. You'll make probably more than 50% of what you make total in the first 48 hours. But it also changes how Kickstarter treats you. So if you're doing really well in the first couple of days, suddenly you're showing up on the front page. 
you're showing up in the discover page real high up. You're showing up in emails, right? Every time another Kickstarter creator sends an email, there's usually two or three different campaigns at the bottom, right? You want to show up in those. A lot of people will back you that way. Um, so forty eight first forty eight, very, very important. So like I mentioned earlier on about your audiences, you really prime them for this. You really say, Hey, I'm launching on this day, please be there. Right? You go to everyone you can and really, really push that first forty eight hours. Tell your mom. Right? <laughs> say, Hey, hey Ma, I'm uh <laughs> I'm launching. You don't have to you don't have to charge her. I did. Um it was a mistake. <laughs> she uh <laughs> she backed it not knowing that it was is I was going to hand deliver it to her, but I did. Um, but yeah, tell everyone, tell everyone, Hey, this is the day, please, please. If you've been thinking about it, like do it, do it right away. Like back me day one, just cause again, you need people that you can really depend on to back it because it's going to help everything else. So if you can, if you know, you have a core group of people that will definitely, definitely back you prime them, tell them. And then there's everyone else. So, uh, you know, <laughs> start bugging people, be creative about it. Um, I was at Fan Expo last year being really annoying. Um, I don't know if I ran into any of you. I apologize if I did. I was handing out bookmarks to anyone who would give me the light of day. If you made eye contact with me, I had something in front of your face immediately after. You don't have to be that annoying, <laughs> right? It actually went all right. I got a few from these. Um, I got a few backers from this. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's whatever you can do to get attention, do it, right? Positive attention, of course. <laughs> if you want to, you don't really want to get people on your side. I put thick skin. That's thick. <laughs> you have to have some really thick skin, though, because uh, even here, where I was giving out freebies, I, uh, not everybody was into me being in their face, right? So you just have to be used to people maybe not giving you the time of day. It's okay, right? That's that's part of it. You just move on, go to the next, right? That's just how sales in general works, so. All right, and then ads. So the people that you can't hand stuff to physically, Facebook, surprisingly, Meta, whatever you want to call it, um, still the best the best place to do this, um, surprisingly. Kickstarter campaigns are weird in the way that they last as long as they last, right? You have your three weeks, but you're doing your campaign, and then it's done. So that it is a little bit of a downside for Facebook and really any online advertising because you usually need a bit of a ramp up. And you can't do that. So don't expect you know uh, you, you, the world to change when you put in your money into ads. But if you're doing it right, and, and this is a whole different course to, to, to look into. So um, you know th there are ways to do this right. So definitely look into it. Um, there's one uh, website, Novel Publicity, that, that does a lot of Facebook ads um, stuff. They can even help you build it. Um, again, they don't specialize in comics. They specialize in self-publishing, but they can help you in that sense. But the whole idea is you break everything out separately, right? This is the this is my one tip I'll give you without getting into like a two-hour seminar. Break everything out separately. Don't use the algorithm, right? What Facebook is focused on, as much as they're focused on you delivering ads and being successful, they're more focused on you just paying the money, obviously. Right. So their algorithm, although it will help get in front of a lot of people, they don't tell you what's not working. So they encourage you to say, hey, give me all your images and give me all your audiences and let me sort it out. I'll figure out who works and who doesn't. And then, and then you don't know. You don't know who's working and who isn't. So if you break everything out yourself and add for every audience and add with every image and add with every blurb, just break it out, all separate ads, right? It's a little bit of work. But it's worth it because then you can start seeing this ad's working, this image is working, this image isn't. I'm going to cut that ad. And then you start saving you money too, right? Because you can see what, what's performing and what isn't and cut the stuff that isn't real quick, right? You do need to leave things for a couple of days to make sure that they hit their markets, but be liberal with the cutting of, of, uh, of the ads. And you can't do that if you use their, either their, they'll pu really push you for their advantage audience, which is an audience they build based on your followers. Again, if you have, tastes outside of comics, they'll use that, which maybe it doesn't help you sell your comic because you're interested in ponies and people who like ponies don't like comics, maybe, right? <laughs> so definitely keep that in mind. You want to build it yourself and you want to be able to control it because that's how you're going to find the most success with these ads. 
And don't even bother with Twitter. <laughs> don't even bother with the ads specifically. So there's a few catches to, to Twitter ads now. You don't know that your campaign will even show. Uh, so I've tried them. Um, I paid for this stupid check as well. Uh, <laughs> it does require you to get a blue check in order to even deliver ads, which is why I have it. Um, and it doesn't... Don't don't waste your money. It doesn't uh, it doesn't do anything for you. you. I saw no real gains from doing the ads, um, nor the blue check. Even it didn't do anything. Um, apparently, it makes you higher in replies than that. I, I don't see it. Um, the best way to use it, and it's not just for X, but for every uh, every platform. You know, it's it's the organic reach. It's reaching out to the other creators. Um, you'll find a lot of times actually tweets like this. Like, hey, indie creators, what do you got? Right, and that's just a chain of all the other creators out there saying, "Hey, I'm launching," and, or "Hey, I'm ten days in," or "Hey, what am I, whatever," and they'll push each other. But Kickstarter itself is actually really friendly, and if you add them, if you tag them, they'll usually give you a repost here and there, and that that you'll find a boost when they do that. So, organic reach is good enough when you're talking about this platform in particular. <laughs> don't don't waste your money. Um. Google ads, I don't have a slide for it, but Google ads are hit or miss. I, I haven't had any success with them. I've heard some people have. You can try them, but right now, I think meta ads are the way to go. And your newsletter, because we talked about how you're building a newsletter and you added me to it. Um, you want these people to really, like you want this list built, and then you're going to prime them. So this is my last post on my newsletter. And the first thing I put was, hey, I'm launching next time. Next time you see my newsletter, my campaign will be launched. I even launched the campaign on the day that a newsletter goes out. So I could be like, hey, I just launched everybody, right? Um, I do it on a schedule. You don't have to be so strict with your newsletter, obviously. But if you are, try to time it nice. Um, that's what I've done. But definitely, you want to keep it in the forefront of their minds. Because again, these are your fans, right? The newsletter is people that came to you specifically and said, I like them. I'm going to follow them. So get them on it. All right, be annoying. So this is my social media calendar. <laughs> I use Social Champ. That's what this is. But you can use any tool, Buffer, uh, Hootsuite, whatever you find out there. Um, don't worry about being annoying. You'd be surprised how few people actually see your social media. Right? You'll post something, and it, it won't hit anybody. Right? Um, there have been a couple instances where there's friends that launched campaigns. I didn't even see it because they posted once or twice. And they said, well, I thought most people don't see it. Right, uh, the life of a tweet is something like twenty something minutes, right? So if you're not posting constantly, it's gone. <laughs> so be annoying, right? The people that are going to block you are going to block you anyway. Don't be offended, right? Like just just keep going, keep trucking, keep posting and posting and posting and being the most annoying people. It's fine. <laughs> it's it's expected. You can send an apology after. And all that said, don't be repetitive though. Right? You don't want to post the same thing over and over and over and over. That will annoy people, even the people that like you. Right? You want to be giving some kind of different content. You know, keep, keep people engaged with um, regular updates, but change it up every once in a while. Don't just sell constantly. Like, be part of the community. I, I've mentioned this a few times now. Boost other people. Jump in on the, the meme train. You know, just <laughs> have fun. Try to have fun on social media. Don't get into arguments, though. Keep it positive if you can. But... Uh, but yeah, you definitely want to change it up because seeing the same image, especially if you're using just your one teaser image, it gets stale real quick. So you want to keep changing it up. You know, it does help. We're in comics, so you have art and stuff to share. So do so if you can. All right. So I was telling you about the scary part in the middle, the dead zone. Look at those charts. So day one, day two, right? Great. And then right down. <laughs> and it stays there. It stays there until the end. It, it, they call it like a bathtub. You'll see at the end it kind of picks up again for most campaigns. But this is typical, so don't panic. After your first 48 hours, you're not going to hear from anybody again. You're going to get one or two backers. So just keep keep pushing. Don't worry about it. One of the ways to push is cross promos. right? Talk to your other creators. Say, hey, we have similar campaigns. I'll push yours if you push mine. Right? I wouldn't rely on this alone because not everybody does it as nice as others some people just throw text in with a with a dirty link right some people will actually add the image some people do nice write-ups really your mileage will vary depending on who you work with but 
but definitely it does help. You, you will see a few backers come through this. This is going to be where you get your two or three per day, really, is through cross promos. Another way to reinvigorate people during the dead zone, stretch goals. So you've made your goal in the first 48 hours. Congratulations. It's great. Even, you know, even if you haven't, that's fine. But, <laughs> but if you have, stretch goals. Um, once you've funded, it's, you know, everybody who wants the comics is going to get it, but you want more people. You don't want to just hit your number and that's it. So stretch goals is something to create an artificial next step, right? We're all going to hit this next number. Make up a number and throw a gift in for doing it. So you're constantly going to be giving something saying, hey, if we, you know, hit 150%, I have this other thing I'm going to give you, right? It could be whatever. It could be something big or it could be, you know, even something small. Hey, I'm going to do a sticker or a magnet or whatever. That's fine. But just give someone, give, give the backers a goal to reach. And then there's pocket rewards. So stretch goals are the freebies you give by saying, hey, you're going to hit this number and I'll give you this. Uh, pocket reward is, hey, halfway through a campaign, I decided to create something entirely new that you can pay for, that you can back, right? You can do it as an add-on. You can do it as a new reward. You can say, hey, I just connected with this, you know, very popular artist and I have a new cover. So if you want the new cover, let me know. There's a risk though, that when you do something halfway through the campaign and you get one of those wishy-washy backers that maybe regrets it and you say, hey, go into your campaign and muck with your order, Cancel button's right there for them. So, <laughs> so it is a risk that they go in, they say, actually, instead of this cover, I don't think I want this at all. It doesn't happen very often. It's very infrequent. But it, just keep in mind it's a risk, right? You are telling them to go and toy with their order that you were hoping that they ordered and, and forgot about. And you're telling them, actually, go take a look again. So keep that in mind. And then the other piece. Get on anything you can during your campaign, right? Podcasts and live streams and, and host panels like this, I, um, do everything you can to get out there and really, really talk to people. When you're talking about podcasts and things, like you're not going to see huge bumps. But the whole idea is you put your face out there over and over and over and you start becoming a common name. And then maybe the next campaign, they'll be, oh, I, I heard that person on so-and-so podcast. I like them. And really, for you to get on these podcasts, you have to have something. So this is your time. So don't wait until mid-campaign to schedule it. Most folks won't have time for you. <laughs> if you wait till then, you have to do it a little bit ahead of your campaign, but do have plans. Like I've got podcasts coming out every week with different hosts um, for this very reason, right? That one's on May 22nd. That one's pretty cool. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so definitely try to get on places, get your name out there, tell people what's going on. And now you're through the dead zone and you're in the last 48 hours. And this is where the big nudge comes. So this is where Kickstarter is follow tool becomes very, very important. So all those people that followed in pre-launch and didn't bother backing it, all the people that liked your campaign and didn't back it, they get an email from Kickstarter, not from you, not from whomever, directly from Kickstarter saying, hey, two days left, back the campaign. And then they still don't back the campaign. They'll get another one, eight hours left, please back the campaign. So you do have time to do this. And then if you're on backer kit, they actually recommend doing it as well. So for the in-between time, between the 48 and 8, you can send another email email through back. Okay, hey, one day left. We're almost done. Hey, a couple hours left. Please go back it. Right? So this is really your last chance to make your, make your money. So definitely, 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 you push in the last 48 hours. And similar to the stretch goals, you know, you, you pick a target. You say, hey, we're at whatever, $5,000 in this case, right? Um, we'd love to hit over. This campaign actually went way over after the fact, right? The last 48 hours because they were incessant. Hey, we're almost done. Please, if you're ever going to take a look, now's the time, right? You don't have to beg, but <laughs> you definitely tell folks. Like, time is running out, and now the ticking clock will get a bunch of backers in. Those people that feel like they're going to miss out on something, you remind them, hey, you are going to miss out on something. This campaign's ending, and get them to back. And then very, 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 very important. Back up your analytics before the campaign ends. If you do not do this, you lose them. They're gone. And there's no way to get them back. So you have one hour to do it. The reason I say the last hour is because this is as accurate as you're going to get. If you do it a day before, you lose the last day, obviously. And hopefully, you get a lot of activity in the last day, right? You get a lot of last-minute backers. But you want to collect these analytics because no one else gets the information that Kickstarter gets about your Kickstarter. Go figure. 
right? So you want to make sure that you are backing this up. It's critical because it's gone once your campaign is done. And if you're still on the page while the campaign ends, you actually get some fireworks and stuff. It's pretty cool. So, <laughs> all right. So the campaign is done. Post campaign. You did it. First thing you do. Thank everyone. Right? You would anyway. I don't have to tell you that, but do it. <laughs> right? Tell everybody thank you. But the more important thing here is you're going to see some backers. You, it charges the cards right away. Your campaign ends. Within half an hour, everybody's charged. And then within that half an hour, you'll find out how many people have outdated credit cards or prepaid cards with no money on them. And you're really, once you've thanked everyone, you start speaking to those folks and saying, hey, I would love to get this out within the next couple of weeks or whatever, right? Whatever your timeline is, but I'd like to get this out as soon as possible. So please update your cards. Kickstarter will try three more times to charge their cards and then we'll give up and we'll drop their pledge and you'll lose that money. So you want them to update their cards. So you're going to remind them. So beyond doing your public display of thanks and all that and saying, hey, but you guys update, I usually give it a couple days and then I start sending individual messages through Kickstarter. Hey, I noticed your card's not working. Hey, let me know if you have any trouble, right? And start pushing them to update. You'll, you might still find some drop pledges, but do everything you can to salvage that because it will affect your end ending numbers. And then you update everybody as to where you're at, right? This is, this is where I am in production. I've printed, I've shipped, I've whatever, but you keep them up to date. The, campaign's not, the campaign is over, the campaign's not over, right? It's still going on for them because you, they haven't received their product. So you keep them in, informed, right? Don't worry about being annoying. They, they want to know. They paid for something now. It's, it's come out of their account, so now they want to know where, where you're at. So every time you hit a milestone, share it, right? I packaged everything. I've mailed it. I've done whatever. And when you're at the point that you're about to ship, you send a survey out. What's your address if you're mailing something? Right? What's your email if it's digital? Usually both, because I usually add the digital with the physical. Um, but use this. Newsletter. Again, hey, you want to join my newsletter? Again, two-thirds of people are going to say yes at least in my experience. So you'll, you'll get a lot of your newsletter followers through your backers because they've actually put money up to follow you. So obviously they're, they like you. Maybe they want to hear what you have to say after the fact. So use this. Use this survey to collect newsletter followers. And then you set up your post-campaign page. So kick, your Kickstarter page is staying online forever. It's going to be there. They do let you edit it a little bit, and they give you one link. That one link goes somewhere. You have to choose <laughs> where that link goes, but you want to drive people to it. And usually what you want to do is drive people somewhere that they can then get your comic. So I mentioned Crowdfunder. This is where Crowdfunder comes in. Crowdfunder is, although a competitor of Kickstarter, they also do something a little different. So they're also kind of a competitor to Gumroad. You can use Gumroad as well. But I, I like Crowdfunder because there's no fees. Um, well, they're small. And if they, you decide to have a fee, you can even opt for your backer to pay the fee if you want and say, hey, if you want to help Kickstarter stay alive, maybe pay the fee. There's all kinds of fee structures where Gumroad will just nail you or any of those other tools, Shopify, if you really have a huge business, it's, you know, you can go that route. But for smaller folk, Crowdfunder is great. It lets you do a star storefront. It lets you link directly to specific comics if you want and say, hey, um, you know, it's a link just direct to the one project and they can back that. It does inventory management. So you've printed X amount for your, for your campaign and sent them out and you only have so many left. And you, you, know, you don't want to have to go count every time you mail something out. This keeps count for you. So highly recommend Crowdfunder for their storefront. Okay, and we were talking fulfillment, shipping things out. So there's ways to handle this. For digital, I, I go overkill. I give them everything. I give them Google Drive and OneDrive and Dropbox. You can do just one. You don't have to go nuts, <laughs> right? Just give them somewhere to download their things. It's Again, if you're using Backerkit, they do do this a little more professionally and give them a link that then goes to your Google Drive anyway or whatever. But you send out all your backers, you know, the links and say, please don't share this out to people who haven't backed, obviously. But uh, yeah, I usually send emails and Kickstarter messages, but again, do, do as you will. The only thing you wouldn't want to do is just do this in a blank update because then um, if you do not select backer only, it's exposed to everybody, and then everybody gets your comic for free. That might upset the people that paid for it. 
So you don't want to do that. And then making sure they get there. So Tanner specific stuff. Everybody loves Gemini mailers. We don't have them here. <laughs> so unless you're willing to do a border run and go grab them. Uh, there's, there's some alternatives. I use these things, these uh, ZMYB whatever packs <laughs> on, on uh, Amazon. They're relatively cheap. They, they hold really well. I did a few test shipments with my brother before I ever started this Kickstarter thing and everything made it to me in one piece. I also bag and board everything just to be extra, extra careful because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't trust you know, the post. Um, <laughs> so bags and boards, Comic Pro Lines in Hamilton. So local, cheap. You can get giant boxes of 1,000 bags and 1,000 boards um, for relatively cheap. So not a bad approach if you're looking to bag all the things you've sold and then huge 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 tip shipping shipping is a pain it's terribly expensive but if you use these one of these two um, services you will save a ton i have become an evangelist specifically for stallion express but there's a catch <laughs> that i will get to next but if you use one of these two services you will honestly save so much money uh, relative to going to Canada Post or UPS or FedEx or any of those places, go here. The th what you have to do is you do package everything and you bring it to them and then say ship it out. What they do is they take all your stuff and they drive it to the U.S. and then they ship it out. So it makes U.S. shipping so cheap, like unbelievably cheap. <laughs> so highly, highly recommend. I use Stallion Express, but I put Chit Chats up there. I've used both. I like Stallion Express better. But the catch is you need a printer. <laughs> if you use Stallion Express. If you're doing things in volume, you want one of those printers anyway, and they're not terribly expensive. You see that one's 95 bucks. That's not I bought. Um, this is, you know, a proper shipping label. Again, if you're doing things in volume, it's nice. It prints it out all one thing, and you just peel them and stick them. But if you don't have that, you can't use Stallion Express. They want, they want the proper labels. Chit Chats will let you do the, through your printer, and you, like, cut and tape <laughs> if you want. And... The prices are relatively comparable, right? But you do save more. And when you start doing things in volume, you know, an extra dollar here, an extra dollar there, it, it, you know, it adds up. So worth getting one of those printers, especially if you're in this for the long haul, if you're doing more than one campaign, that's going to pay itself off in no time. And then the most important thing in the last step is you track everything on Kickstarter. Once you've shipped everything, you go on Kickstarter and you say, hey, I shipped it. Why is this important? Because you are only allowed to start your next campaign once you've shipped everything. If you do not fulfill, you do not get to do play again. So make sure that you update it and say, hey, I'm done. And this is just saying that it's left your door. So you don't have to wait for it to hit every door out there. Right? Again, you make, if, if you want the person to come back, you definitely want to make sure that things are going well. And those two tools, uh, Stallion Express and Chit Chats, do have tools to track all the shipping and where things are at. So you can keep an eye on all that post-campaign. But as far as Kickstarter goes, once it leaves your door, you flag it and say, yep, I sent everything to Stallion Express, it's gone. And then you update this. Only at that time can you start your next campaign. All right? So very important. Until you become a creator in good standing. That means you've launched four campaigns and you've successfully fulfilled them. And then you can do up to six at a time. Right? Then you can leave six unfulfilled. That means you can have one that just finished, one that's going, and one that's about to start. This, in, this counts your pre-launch page as well. So keep that in mind. Right? Like if you want to get started, you're going to need to, uh, you're going to, need to finish. All right, and congratulations. You've done it. So what do you do now? You start the next project. <laughs> <laughs> start again. Right? So you can do as many drafts as you want. As you can see, I have a few waiting and pending. Um, I've, I've fuzzed them out. Oh, the screen's fuzzy enough. You're not going to be able to read it anyway. But uh, yeah, yeah, just keep it, keep it up. So now you've learned this experience. You've done all that. If you're with Backerkit, it grabs all those people. But if not, when you launch your next campaign, Kickstarter is going to help you out and email everyone and say, hey, you backed this person before. They backed them. They, they started another project. You want to back it. So as you continue and as you do more in Kickstarter, you'll find things get more and more, you know, you, you'll do better and better over time because you're building an audience and they come with you from campaign to campaign. So definitely keep it up. And real quick, because we're right at 10. Some resources. So this is, I've learned a lot from these places. The last one's me. I didn't learn anything from me. 
but the rest, <laughs> highly recommend. Travis Gibb, I did his little tweet there at the beginning of every month. He invites people to his Discord, and his Discord is full of friendly people like myself who are happy to help you. They will look at your campaign. They will help you with ads. They will look at your comic even and criticize it if you want. Uh, very friendly. Pat Shand is a dynamo on Kickstarter. He, If you look at any of his campaigns, six figures regularly, and he's very accessible. You can You can bug him. You can ask him questions. Very friendly. Matt Garvey. I know I'm going from the bottom up. Uh, <laughs> Matt Garvey has a lot of YouTube uh, videos that help um, really break down the specifics. Go here, click this. Go here, do this. It's all on YouTube, so it's free. But if you really want to get into it and you really want to get some some interesting knowledge, Comics Launch. Uh, they have a podcast. Uh, it's uh, been around forever. So a lot of back backlog of, of uh podcast to listen to plus if you join his group which is about a thousand dollars us so not cheap um you do get access to a bunch of creators and a bunch of resources and tools and things i am a part of that group it is well worth it um it's it's steep though <laughs> it's you know i understand if not everybody could do it so the podcast does share a lot of the information he's shared in the in his course but yeah, it's hard. Uh, most of the people who have done really well on Kickstarter are part of that course. So it's hard to compete with that because you're getting access to all these people as well. Um, but yeah, some good resources. But other than that, I am done. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>